Here we are, folks. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Wow. So good to be with you. I have been, I have been on a, I've been on a three-day study journey. Our preacher says often that he'll get to studying and before he knows it, it's morning. And uh, it, it's so simple to get. If you get in, in the study mode in the Bible and, and God starts showing you and enlightening you with things that are so enlightening, so enlightening, what do you know about Genesis 1-1? What do you know about the God that eternally existed? And one day he decided to speak some things into existence that he would have. He would, he would take a, a meteorite and a star and fling it in place. And he named that. All of the stars have names. God has names for the stars. They're his stars. He can name them all. He has a millions since the beginning of time when Adam was made. God has probably billions of saved children. Knows every one of their names. Knows the number of every hair on their head. He is the everlasting, eternal, almighty, all-seeing, all everything God. He is everything. I did a study earlier this week in, in a, 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 a few things. The tribute to God, and I'm going to talk about these one day. The, the tribute of God, the attribute of God is a tribute about God, the attribute that he has. Uh, he declared a decree in Psalms, he declared, when God declared a decree, it's irrevocable, unbreakable, unsearchable, unreachable. Uh, uh, it has everything that's the richest possible thing. When God clad a degree, he declared a degree when he spoke the earth into existence. The decree was the earth was to stay in the orbit he put it in to revolve the way it was revolving, not move out of that orbit and do what he said. He is an omniscient God. What is that? That means he is in charge of everything. Every single solitary thing from the speck of dust that he took and made Adam. If you don't think he's in charge of everything, take a look. Just take a look. He took dust and made these two eyes. And they work the same. They work together. They don't see double. I got two eyes and they see individually and tell my brain a single thing. Like this. They don't tell my brain two things at one time and confuse the matter. They tell my brain individually. <laughs> How foolish could you be to think that these two eyes evolved and they work like they work? I got two ears. I don't hear double. I don't hear double. I hear single with my two ears. I got two nostrils that suck air in. Where do they go? They go to two lungs. They have little sacs in them and the air puffs them up and they go out. And that those little sacs cleanse the blood that's flowing from my heart, pumping through my body. <laughs> and you think that just evolved? There's something wrong up here in your head. If that's what you think, son, a uh, daughter, a uh, man, a woman, if you've been taught other than creation, you have been falsely taught. You have been brainwashed. Brainwashed from the absolute necessity to see that God can only... Look at these hands. Five fingers on each hand and I can tell them to do the same thing at the same time. Look, two eyes, two ears, a mouth, nose breathing, and, and I'm telling my hands to do this, and I'm, my feet are going up and down. I'm telling my feet, 
Same time now, I got my feet going up and down. I'm going to swing my legs. I'm swinging my legs. I'm swinging my... You think all that just evolved, huh? <laughs> that just evolved, huh? Yeah, yeah. When pigs fly... <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, sakes alive, I get a kick. I've been studying now for three solid days about this God and his names, has dozens of names of this God. When he did different things, he was Elohim when he made the earth. He was Elohim. He was the, the, the word Elohim, uh, is the first of the primary, the primary names of the deity of, of God. What is the deity of God? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Deity of God. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere all at one time. He is omniscient. He can be in, the Holy Spirit can be in all people who accept him in all at all one time. He is omniscient. He is Elohim. The first part of Elohim is E-L, which means strength. Means strength. He is the strong God. Hey, since God created the earth, there have been millions of little gods. He even says, God even says himself in one place, he said, you whittle out little gods and put them on the mantelpiece and bow down to them. What was amazing when the children of Israel built the golden calf, the words that they said. This is the calf <laughs> that led us out of Egypt. How idiotic. When you leave God, you leave your common senses. You leave your senses. When you leave out God, you leave out common sense. Did you know that every single rule, every regulation, every law, every single thing that you and I know today in the judicial system, in the legal system, came originally from God's Bible came originally from God's finger. He wrote the Ten Commandments on a piece of rock and sent them down here with a man and said, these are the commandments. One of the first ones, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Wow. And he wrote those things. And they are our laws today. Now, now the strong one, E.L. is strength, or the strong one. He was the strong one. Matter of fact, he was the only one. <laughs> he was the only one in the beginning. This was him. All God. All out in the fur out universe. That was God. But God had a mind to do something. By the way, Deity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is called a, un, a, a plural word, uniplural, a noun. It's a noun, and it, and it, and it, uh, I've been studying. I've been studying this. When it formed the three things, it became a noun. That's uni. It was a union of three, and it was a noun. Us. It was a noun, us. <laughs> Let us. Wow, ain't that something? Hey, the strong one, Allah, it is to swear, to bind oneself by an oath. To bind yourself, if you swear and bind yourself, I went down and bought two tires today. And I didn't sign no paper. I just told the man, I said, I'll pay you uh, when I see further. He said, you been to eye doctor lately? <laughs> I said, no, but I'll, I plan on going before I come pay you. And uh, so uh, I still have a word of mouth customer that I can work with. I can get down there and tell him, say, Jerry, I'll put four tires on here, will you? 
And he'd say, yeah, where do I send the bill? <laughs> I'd say, send it to my, my address. You got it in the book. And uh, he's the only man just about in the whole world that I owe. But I like owing him because I go in there on a weekly basis or so and lay a little money down, get to talk about the Lord, and get to have a good time with a friend by doing it that way. And um, so, uh, nobody else can swear by oneself except God. He can swear by himself. He can swear to the truth by himself because he is truth. And there is no, N-O, great big capital, N-O, no lie in him. No untruth. No untruth ever entered heaven. No untruth tried to enter heaven. An untruth tried to enter heaven. The devil himself was in perhaps this atmosphere and on perhaps this earth uh, billions of years ago perhaps. And he said, I'm going to raise my throne up equal to God. And God said, no, you ain't, big boy. And he cast him out of heaven. And where do we find him? We find him on this earth. And we find hell in the center of the earth burning. And we find water all the way around the earth when God said, let us go down. And he took the water that was all around the earth and moved some of it up into the heavens, into the firmament. And some of it he left on the earth and he took his hand and squeezed out a little river and a lake and an ocean. <laughs> I can see the Atlanta Ocean, Atlantic Ocean being a footprint of God. Biggest ocean in the world. Man, gigantic ocean. If you were to really look at it on the map, take you one of those round maps and look at the oceans on this earth. One Atlantic and Pacific, the two feet of God standing on the earth, pressing down in a clay, and then picking his feet up and going back to heaven. Wow. Look, this is God, El, El, Elohim. Wow, 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 wow. The faithfulness of God. The uniplurality of him. I'm an uneducated man. But when I get in the Bible and get studying the Bible and I get my books behind me here, I got a desk over there right now. That desk over there, my life has a fit. I can count uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 25 books open on that table. What are those books? Well, two or three of my dictionaries, two or three of my uh, uh, concordances from the Bible, now, I'm gonna run a word to death. I'm gonna run that word. I'm gonna run that word till it won't run no more. And if God gives me a word, I looked at some things God did in chapter one, and, and it said God created, and then God moved on it, and then God said, and then God saw, uh, and then God divided, and then God called, and then He said again, made and called. Said again, called and saw. Said, saw and said again. Made, set and saw. Ah, oh, created again something. What did he create? He created man. He created man out of what he had already created. I, I really shouldn't say he created man except he did create man. But he made man. He made man out of what he had already created. He had created the dust. And then he formed and he made man out of that dust. People that tell you they created something, that's foolishness. They formed something out of what God created. You can form it out of a piece of lumber or a piece of metal, a piece of tin, sand, the dust, whatever you want it to take. It's all God's that you're taking. You ain't created nothing. You've made something out of what God created. Let's get that down in our heads. God created it. Now the deity is what? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is called the Trinity. That is the Trinity. And, and the Trinity is 
in Elohim. It's Latin. The Elohim. Elohim. It is the Trinity. Latin word. As meaning primary the strong one El Ohim holds together the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now as we study Genesis 1, we're going to see these things come in place. Let's read, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. <laughs> uh -huh. He hadn't made no sun and moon yet. Study that. There was light before the sun and moon. When God shows up, there's light. He is light. When Moses just looked at the hinder part of God between two rocks, there was two rocks, and God said, I'm going to pass by just my hind apart. And, and Moses got a glimpse of his hind apart when he came off the mountain. He shined like a light. They had to put a bag over his head because he was so bright. God is light, and in him, listen to this, there is no darkness. Now I want to put something else on you that you ain't seen yet. There isn't even a shadow of darkness. How about that? Earthly light makes a shadow. Godly light makes no shadow. It wraps around. If I was standing in the presence of godly light, it would be all the way around me, around my front, my back, and all. There would be no shadow, none. No shadow at all. How about that? So, here we are. And God saw that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness night. And he called the night and the evening and the morning were the fifth, first day, excuse me, first day. And, and God said, hey, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, <laughs> the firmament was the, what you and I call the first heaven. That's what we see, the first heaven. And he had water up over that first heaven for the first uh, 1,656 years. There was a canopy of water over this earth. It didn't rain for, for 1,656 years. It didn't rain on this earth. That canopy of water made a greenhouse effect. Why do you think God made dinosaurs? He made dinosaurs for to be big lawnmowers. <laughs> if it was a canopy effect, a blade of grass was going to grow tall as a man. Wow, he had to have some kind of lawnmower to eat that. And by the way, uh, dinosaurs were not made carnivores. They were made herbivores. What made them carnivores, Brother Peter? After the devils, after, the, after Adam sinned and the devil brought on this earth, the things, hey, hey, Adam could lay down with a lion, lay down with a lamb, lay down with a dinosaur, lay down with anything. They weren't going to touch him. He named them all. God brought the, everything by him and see what they were named. By the way, Adam named everything. He named the trees. He called grass, grass. He called the trees, trees. He called the every name of every tree. He called that. Whoo, you say, how did he do that? Well, Adam had the mind of God until he sinned. He had the mind of God in him. He, he could see things as God saw them. He was made by God's hand, and he was pure light. He was clean. He didn't have any problem like he had after he sinned. All right, God made that firmament, and the waters which were above the waters underneath, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God shall let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And he gathered together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seed. And every, uh, and, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. Whose seed is in itself 
upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herbs yielding seed after its kind. I want you to see. You say, Brother Peter, why are you reading so much? It's not really so much. What it is, is there's so many words that mean something. Each word means something. One of the things that's the most important statement in every sentence I just read was everything was after its kind. Wow! What does that do with a monkey turning into a man? That makes it a lie. That makes it a misnomer. It makes it impossible. Because every seed was after its kind. A monkey was after its kind. A man was after his kind. And, and that's the difference right there. Look at the words you're reading. Seed, 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 seed. You're looking at tree, tree, tree. What does a tree do? Yields fruit, fruit, fruit. Whose seed was in itself after its kind. And God saw it was good. Verse 13. And evening and the morning were the third day. Now the fourth day. We are going to see the sun and moon. And God said. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. <laughs> to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs. And for seasons. And for days. And for years. And let them be for lights. In the firmament of the heaven. To give light upon the earth. And it was so. Did you know this earth is going to be one day. The sun will not be necessary anymore. The son of God, Jesus Christ, will be the light. He will be the light. The light will come from the throne of God. And the sun itself will not be needed anymore. I wonder maybe... Is God going to take this old earth when he said he throws it into the eternal fire to burn forever? Is he going to throw it into the sun? Is God going to take the earth, throw it into the sun, and then take the sun and throw it beyond the galaxies that he knows into the great abyss, into the black hole in the sky? There's a black hole up there for a reason. God put it there for a reason. It's called a black hole. It's endless. Everything is within so far from it, it sucks it in and it's gone. It's called a black hole. The endless hole. The bottomless pit. If it just goes and goes and goes and goes eons and eons and millions and billions of miles, billions and billions and billions and trillions of miles, just goes. That's God for you. <laughs> God is infinity. He is the infinity. He is an infinity. He's an infinity. He is an infinity. And and he's he's gone. So he put the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and to rule over the night. And if you mark this word yet. Have you marked it in your Bible yet? Have you looked at it? And have you seen that what God said He did? He made these greater lights. Listen to what He did. To rule the day and the night and the stars. And God did what? S-E-T. Study that word. He set them. Where they're going to stay. And they ain't moving. Wow. Do you know, as far as I can find out, the human being on earth is the only rebel, real rebel against God. The only rebel on this earth against God. You know what an oak tree does? It does exactly what it was told to do. It roots itself in the ground. It grows as big as it can. Birds land in it. It makes acorn nuts that make more trees, that feed the squirrels, feed the animals, feed the birds. When our, a tree over our house out here is in bud, in full bud, Birds come by by the droves, eating those little buds, and we still get ten bushel of nuts out of the bottom of the tree, and a uh, hundred squirrels around here eating them day and night, winter and summer. Ah, uh, listen, 
That tree has done exactly what God told it to do. But God made man, and what did man do? He rebelled. He was told to not eat of one tree. He had one rule. One stinking little old rule. Do not eat from that tree. Only rule he had in the whole world. He didn't have another rule in the world. He could do nothing. He could walk in the garden with God in the early morning hours in the, or in the late evening hours. He could walk with God in the cool of the day. There's two cools of the day. There's a cool of the day in the morning and a cooler day in the late evening. And he could walk with God and, and talk with God. And he broke the one little old rule. One rule he broke it. Wow. Man. Let's see here. What way did he set those up to rule over the day and the night and the evening and the morning with the fourth day? Do you know something? All of the astronomers that have ever been born and that are living right now can explain to you how the galaxy works without collision. And if they were to explain it to you the way they see it, they would have to say only a God could have set it up. There's no way a God could even Galileo knew God set this up. That machine he made with all of the planets and everything. If you turned it wrong, they hit each other. <laughs> Beautiful machine if it was working right, just perfect. It was good, but you could make it go wrong and they'd hit each other. Hey, God didn't make any wrong ones. He made them all right. Okay, listen to this. Alright, fifth day, fifth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly and moving creatures that have life and fowls that fly in the air above the earth and the firmament of heaven. And God created whales and every living creature that moveth with the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Oh, there it is again. After their kind. And every wing fowl after his kind. Wow. And saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters, fill the seas, let the fowls multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. God wanted to multiply and replenish this earth. He wanted to, the word over here is replenish. He wanted to replenish this earth. Evidently, there's a good possibility God had used this earth at one time. We don't need to get into the technical part of that. There is one thing, there is a possibility that some of these guys out here, and not in specifically carbon dating because it makes too many mistakes. But the fossils tell us things that are above and beyond the natural man of 6,000 years. And so, therefore, we know the earth could have been used. We know that Satan was the one that turned it void and dark. And uh, it was in that place in the center of it called hell. Let's go to the sixth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind. Cattle, creeping things, and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after his kind, and every living thing, creeping thing, upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Wow. Woo. That was the sixth day. And the creation of man. And God said, let us. There we go again. There's that noun word that is three of us. And remember what we said it was. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Where I've got it here. Right, right now, what we said, that noun word was a... Oh, what was it? What was it? What was it? That was a uni plural noun. Uni. A union of three. Us. Plural. Noun. 
Okay, I don't even know English at all. I just, the only English I know is what I get out of this Bible. And uh, so it was a plural noun. Okay. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, the same thing he said to the animals, be fruitful. Same thing he said to the animals. Same thing he said to the birds. Same thing he said to the fish in the sea. Same thing he said to every living creature, he said to man. And multiply and replenish, there's that word, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all of the earth, and every tree in the which is fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and when God said the word meat here he was talking about any kind of stable substance was meat because Adam and Eve did not need eat, eat meat until after they sinned the only meat they ate was the meat of a tree it was what was called it was called, the food in that day was called meat. It was given to them for food, for, for the meat. And God said, Behold, I have given every herb bearing seed. Okay, verse 30. And every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So every single thing that he made on the earth, read the verse. You say, Peter, these, these, when God made these, they were meat eaters. You didn't read verse 30. Will you read verse 30, please? Take your Bible, King James Version, out and read verse 30 and see what it says. And to every beast. How many is that? Every. How many is that? All. Every. Every beast of the earth. And every fowl of the air. And to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so <laughs> find me a carnivore find me one of them carnivores they're not there it, either they if, if you think they're there you think God's a liar can any uh, man woman boy girl person call God a liar no and they can. Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold it was very good. Wow. This is the first time he uses that word. It was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Wow. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And the host of them. And on the seventh day... God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. There you go again. I told you, he created and made. Look at your verses. Look at your words and sections. I take my pen all day long in my Bible. I circle sections. I got them separated. Like this. So I can see three words, 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 three words. And I can study those three words. That means something. Mark your Bibles. I ain't got one near enough to pick up. But mark your Bibles. Mark them from cover to cover, end to end. Now, did we uh, went over to the end of chapter 2 and we skipped something I wanted to read here. On the sixth day, uh, God said, Let that bring forth uh, creatures after his kind and all the creeping things, the beasts of the earth after their kind, and God, made the, and God made the beast of the earth after his kind. Now, what did God, how did God get the beast? Did he speak them into existence? Did God speak, verse 25 of chapter 1, did God speak the beast into existence? What's it say? 
and God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and every living creeping thing on the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And now the sixth day was the creation of man. God said, and here we go, this is the first time, and I told you, and then I, I got sidetracked, we're back on it now. Let us make man in our, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I said it wrong. It doesn't say in our image. It says after our likeness. Make man our own image. Yes, it does. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowls of the air, the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. When was Eve created? She was created at the exact same time Adam was. But she was not taken out of him yet. God had not taken her out of Adam. Out of Adam's rib. There's a little miniature Eve in here. <laughs> and she's created there. And God's going to take her out. One of these days in the near future in, in this episode that we're reading. And multiply and replenish the earth. Subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over everything that moveth upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. We've already been through this. What I skipped over was where God made man. Now I'm down here in chapter 2 and verse 4. There are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. When they were, <coughs> when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. I wish that you could take verse 5 and do some some summary on it. Do you know that I have found that most verses that you really have to spiritually discern without any shadow of doubt it has to be spiritually discerned that in the center margin there will be a blank. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> All the guys that put these Bibles I've got around here together couldn't come up with something to put in the middle, an answer. I got an answer for you. It's a spiritual answer. It was God. And if we knew everything God did, we would be God and He wouldn't. So He doesn't want us to know everything He did. But it's something that how these things that He brought to the earth, He brought from somewhere. Perhaps another earth. You reckon He brought them from another earth? You say, nah, he couldn't you? Why couldn't he? <laughs> Why couldn't he? <laughs> hey, if we can make a spaceship and put air in it, and we're finite little old men, human beings, and put air in it and send it to the moon and get it to come back with air in it, and the people are still alive, and they take a live plant in there and bring it with them, don't you think God could have brought from another universe and another planet some grass and seed and, and trees and all the other stuff down here and put it here? Don't you think that? He said every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Did you know that rain is a substance the earth can't live without? The earth cannot absolutely positive 100 percent and neither can man live without water you can't live without water our earth without water would, would die and god made the water 
for the earth and the earth for the water. He made the water for man and man for the water. And with everything he made for the water, he made the water for. Uh, this is the this is the omniscience of God. This is I've got a thing. I got five pages over here of, of things that I wrote that I could fit the word, the proper word. If I could put the proper word in there for God, one of the words of God in his one of his attributes is one of his at several of his attributes are that he's able to do anything that he thinks or says. He's able to do that. If you and I could fathom that, we would be God. It said, but there went up a mist from the earth. You say, how did the ground get watered? I'm telling you. Read it. Verse 6. There went a mist up from the earth that watered the whole face of the ground. Every single morning, a mist came out of the earth and watered the ground. You go out and you get your feet wet. Go out in the morning just before daylight, before the sun comes up. And get your feet wet in the grass. That mist came up. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. <laughs> Ooh, wait. The breath of God made a living soul. The blood of God made a living body. I got news for you. If God hadn't put some blood in the body of Adam, he never would have stood up. Never could have stood up. You know what's amazing? Is that God formed all this body for Adam, and it takes blood to make it work. And it takes billions of molecules. And look how big it can be to, and it dies, if you melted it down, you could uh, fit it in a tea kettle. That's how much water you have. You could be put in a tea kettle. Wow. Man is, is a finite being. The habitation of unfallen man. Wow. The Edenic. Or Eden. Edenic. Eden. And a covenant God made with Adam. And God did not break his side of the covenant. Not even when he cast Adam out of the garden. The covenant said, If you do what I tell you, this is the results. If you do what I tell you not to do, this is the results. God put a word up there, grace. My grace is sufficient for you. That's if you do everything you're supposed to do. And my grace is sufficient for you. If you do it, you know, what you're not supposed to do, you can get your hand cut off. I, our boy and I were talking just today. And I said, do you know a man that gets his hand cut off? God's grace is still on that man. God's grace is still on that man. You say, well, he got his hand cut off. Well, he stuck it in the wrong place. The grace was given. If you want to stay under it, you do what God says do right as God said do it. If you get out from under the grace, you're still under the grace, but you're away from the shadow of God being over you, and so you're in a dangerous place. You can get your hand cut off. And it may be real grace for some people to get their hand cut off, and they come back to the Lord and say, Wow, I went out there in the world and I did this. Look, I ain't got no hand to prove it. <laughs> wow. And God said, well, my grace is sufficient. Brought you back home. And the Lord God planted eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Just think. God made all the trees, made all the things he made. But then he took a certain group, a special group of things, and put them in the Garden of Eden just for the man. And he gave him some, some special food in there for him. And some special thing. And and then God, after God made it and formed it and had it grow and everything, he, he, he loved it himself. And he loved Adam. And and he loved it enough to step out of heaven and onto the Garden of Eden and to walk and talk with Adam. 
Wow. And he made, he made, the Lord made, he grew every tree, in the, uh, and the tree of life, and the tree of, in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden, listen to this, to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became four heads. Imagine that river. That river was so great that it watered that whole garden, the land Havela, the Vela, it, it watered that whole garden and became four great rivers. And, and those rivers are there today. And the, the Ganges, it flows 2,500 miles or so or more. And, and, and those long rivers, listen to this, it flowed from the garden. And the name of the first was Pison, and, uh, which compasseth the land of Havilah. That was the Garden of Eden. It was in the land of Havilah. And what else is in Havilah? Let's see what else is in Havilah. Woo, this is interesting. Where there is gold. <laughs> hey, hey, you go over there and find out where Havilah is geologically and start digging. You're going to find some gold. God said the gold is there. The gold is there in the land of Havilah. And the gold of that land is good. And look, there is Bedlam. And the onyx stone. Do you know that probably nearly as much money has come from making jewelry out of bedlam and onyx stones and things? But I'm going to tell you something about the stones. Listen, Brother Peter. Get your stone book. I got one. And look at these stones. Look them all up. Look at all the colors of them. Get you a, a group of them. Find you some place where they have stones and you go buy as many of these pieces of stones as you can buy and you group them together and you shine a light through the bottom of it and you'll have a rainbow the color the rainbow is. Do you think that just happened? Do you think that just happened? Not on your life. Every color in the rainbow is one of God's colors. If you will study the tabernacle in the wilderness, you're going to find the colors of the rainbow in the tabernacle. They had to dye badger skins different colors and pile them up uh, over the, the uh, mercy seat of God in the tabernacle where the mercy seat was kept, where the Holy Spirit uh, dwelt. And hey, <laughs> all those skins that were dyed and everything, they weren't put there so that light would shine in, wouldn't shine in. They were put there so the light of God wouldn't shine out. It's called the Shekinah glory of God. If it had shined out, it would have blinded people. So they had to dye all these badger skins and all these different skins, and they had to layer them over, one over the other, one over the other, one over the other. And by changing the colors of them, they make them where light wouldn't go through them. And, and so... That's how they did that, and that's why that was formed that way. Study, <laughs> study your Old Testament. Get in your Bible, will you? I've been in the Bible 40 years. Two weeks ago, I joined a college called Titus Baptist Seminary out of LaGrange, Georgia. You can find it on your computer at uh, faith, uh, faithlagrange.com and Titus Baptist College. <laughs> If you want to join it, it'll cost you pennies. Absolute pennies, that's all. What you can afford. That's what it'll cost you. What you can afford. Now it costs that man that's putting it on and doing everything he owns and has got. But he's willing to give everything he's got that you could have this college at, at a, a generous, very generous, whatever it costs you. Whatever you feel like sending in. Whatever you do send in. But you can get in that college. You can get a four-year degree. He just graduated 14 out of our church with a four-year degree. And now he's got uh, 14 going on to get a master's. There'll be eight years getting that master's. Four more years getting that master's. And so uh, here's a college that anybody can go to by disc. He will send you the disc. And you get started. He does expect, if you start, that you be prominent in it. That you actually do what you say you will. One, one of the things you're going to have to do is read the read your Bible all the way through in a year's time. 
You know something? You have to give some time. You have to turn TV off. You have to turn TV off. For some of you, you may have to set your beer can out of the way. Some of you may have to set your Coke bottle out of the way. But, but uh, God is giving you an opportunity to go to college. Titus Baptist Seminary. Why? All right, let me go. Just because it says Baptist, don't be scared of it now, you Catholics. You may go to it. It doesn't say one thing to you that your Bible doesn't say. I got your Bible right there. That red Bible right there. That big one right there. That red Bible right there is the Catholic Bible. I don't find a thing in it. Uh, I, in, in what books that I have in my King James Version? Uh, in that Bible. And I don't find, I find fault with none of them. All the books that are in my Bible, that are in that Bible, I find no fault with. You say, well, what about the Apocrypha, Brother Peter? I stay away from the Apocrypha. I don't need it right now. If I ever need it, God will give me, show me the need. But right now, what I need, I get what I need from the books that are in there that I have. And they're the same. They're the same writing. They're very good. They're okay. And you can get saved by those. And you can learn how. You Catholic folk can learn how to pray without a priest. The first prayer you have to pray is Jesus. <laughs> hey, Pope. Uh, Pope the uh, something. I read the letter he wrote. You know what he said? He said, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin. Come in your heart and save your soul and he will. That's what Pope said. So if you'll do that, you can do that. And then you have an advocate with the Father. And where is he? He's in your heart. You invited him in your heart. Now, it's not just, just for Catholics. You guys want to come to this college? Anyone you can come that want. It doesn't matter what religion you are. You can take this college course. It's on the Bible. It's not about religion. It's not about denominations. It's about what the Bible says. Christianity. It's about what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit says, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. All right, let me get through where we are here. Okay. All right, the Lord planted the garden of Eden. We got to get on. All, right, all of these stones that he put there, we got to move uh, over to the temptation of Eve. It said, For God doth uh, know, uh, then in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. Listen. And the woman said unto the serpent, all right, let's look at uh, chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. This is the only... By the way, by the way, I want to tell you this. A little while ago I saw it. When I was reading, the, everything was after its own seed. But here's the serpent. And we read about the serpent. When we really study this serpent, we find out that earlier he was some type of a cattle maybe, or an animal. He was cursed to, and changed to be something different. To crawl on his belly. The only thing in the whole Bible that we see here is changed the seed of was the devil. Originally he was a fallen angel. He was an angel of God. He was the light holder. And he was changed into some type of animal. And now he's changed into a serpent that crawls on his belly. Wow. Wow. And, and God, it's the only seed that I see that was changed something that wasn't. Now, the other seed that we're going to see, the seed that the serpent bruises the heel of and he bruises the head is Jesus Christ. That's the seed of Christ. And that's called the seed of a woman. How many of you people out there know that a woman doesn't carry seed? Man does. But there was a seed put in a woman by God to bring it down through eons of ages to marry and and use it. <laughs> Woo wait. Uh, what that says about the Holy Spirit. Wow. And wisdom. Wisdom is called she and in, in, in chapter eight of Proverbs read it and it's Jesus. It is Jesus himself. He was a child and he played before God. Before the earth was. And I'll tell you another thing he did before the earth was here where it is now like it is now for you and I. He played in the habitable parts of it. Read it over there in Genesis 1.1. I mean now uh, Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs 8, 22 on. All right. Ah, 
Man, we, we got, and God changes not. Our time is coming, almost gone, and we got to get this in. All right, what did the woman do? The serpent said, all right, let's see what the woman did. Okay, and now in the field was, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the fruit of the garden of Eden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. And I want to tell you what. She's in the presence of the devil. And he is already influencing her. Because now she's going to say something that is not recorded that God said. And she said, Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. That was an addition. She was in the presence. When you get in the presence of the devil, he'll make a liar out of you. You get far enough away from God, out of church and everything, he'll make a liar out of you. He made it out of Eve. For God does know, the devil says, in the day that you eat. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. That you shall eat, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like the gods. And when the woman, S-A-W, what'd she do? She saw that the tree was good for food. She saw it was good for food, and that it was pleasant. She's looking at the devil's, she's looking out of the Lord's garden into the devil's eyes and talking with the devil and she sees, she saw this. I tell you, look at the devil. You hold hands with the devil. You know what he's going to do with you? He's going to take you further than you're going to want to go. He's going to keep you longer than you want to stay and he's definitely going to cost you more than you want to pay. Every time. Every time. Every time. All right, we got to get on. And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves because they were naked. And God said, Who told you you was naked? Have you eaten of that tree? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid and I hid. And he, he said, Who told thee thou, that I was naked? And have you eaten of the tree? And he said, That woman you gave me. <laughs> that woman you gave me. She made me do it. She made me do it. And I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. I'm going to tell you something. The serpent didn't beguile Adam. He knew that was a naked woman standing in front of him. And he knew if he didn't eat of that fruit, he wasn't going to have that naked woman. And ever since that day to this, man has sold his soul for a naked woman. Be careful, men. Be careful, men. Be careful, men. You see Eve's problem was? She looked, she looked, she looked, she took, she saw, she ate. Mm, bad, bad, bad situation. You'll do it, I'll do it, any other man will do it. If you get out of the will of God, be careful. I read a piece just this week uh, of a broken heart. I got a counseling book. I'm talking about counseling. I'm learning how to counsel. And there was a woman that, that uh, was a wife of a, the, one of the most prestigious husbands in a church that ever was. And, and she found out that he had had affairs with many women. It, I, it, it almost killed her instantly. Almost killed her instantly. Made her get beside herself and, and be a nut. I tell you what. I, I tell you, you be careful. you got to be careful. Be careful. All right. I put enmity between thee. This is the most important verse. One of the most important verses in the Bible. This is Jesus Christ foretold. Get you six Bibles if you want them. Every one of them, get them with a good reference. Get them all King James Version. And every one of them will tell you the same thing. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Wow. You can study that until the stars fall out of heaven. You follow that seed through. You're going to come up on Jezebel. You're going to come up on Rahab. You're going to come up on some women and you think, Wow, is that possible that that woman carried the seed of Jesus? Hey, if you follow the lineage up to Jesus, you're going to find some scoundrels. <laughs> some real scoundrels. And they're in there. 
Our time's come and gone. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Love you. See you next time. May God bless you. Tune in. Turn on. Uh, get others to watch too. Bye-bye.